What is happening, guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably did see that I snapped an axle a few weeks back for my long travel setup on the front end. Um, Dirt King was kind enough to send me out a pair of axles, so we're going to go ahead and install one of those into the CV on the broken side. Uh, so stay tuned for that. We're going to talk about what you're looking at doing when you're actually installing your extended axle into your CV joints. So as you guys can see, I have already disassembled my old CV axle. So this is the outer piece that goes into the hub, which we're going to need to add some new seals onto this one here. Um, other than that, you can see that we have the new axle shaft here, the 3.5 inch extended. Um, we have the inner piece here. This actually goes into the other section of the CV axle that connects to the transfer case or the uh, front differential. Sorry. So we have that piece here. Um, just by taking off the inner CV boot, you can actually get to this whole setup. So you don't have to actually pull out the intersection of the uh, CV axle from the differential if you don't want to. Um, we have our long travel boot here, and then we have some new grease and some new clips and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and get to the actual install. So real quick, I do want to talk about what I meant by you can just remove the inner CV boot, which is the brand new one from Toyota. That's why there's no grease on it. Um, but instead of actually going in and prying off your whole entire CV boot or your CV axle from the front differential, you can actually just remove the clamp around the front CV or the inner CV boot and this whole entire portion of the axle shaft then becomes exposed and you can actually pull it out once you loosen the axle nut here. So it's just a little shortcut you can do without having to pry it out of this, uh, the front differential. Um, but it makes things a little bit easier since you are gonna have to do a few more steps later on. And one more thing I wanna talk about before we actually get to the install, um, just because I know I ran into a hiccup here, it is a little bit difficult to do. Um, so this is the new axle piece that I have here. But if you are trying to remove your original stock axle section here, um, as you can tell, there is a big old retaining ring on the bottom of that shaft that actually inputs into this portion of the CV. So you have to basically get past that for this whole entire unit to come out. Um, I ended up basically pounding on every single one of these teeth here over and over and over again. And finally, it would come free. So um, if you guys get to the point where you are kind of struggling to get that off, don't be scared just to start whacking it pretty hard. Um, I know I've tried air hammers, sledgehammers, tap, I mean, anything you can really think of. Um, it basically just needs to have the force to basically shear that clip off inside of there and then that actually will, will come free. So um, don't be scared to hit it. But now that we touched on those few things, let's actually get to the install. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your extended axle shaft. So this is the same for the 3.5, which this one is, or the 2-inch extended shafts, either way. Um, the side that has the retaining clip. Now Dirt King is kind enough to include that with the kit. Um, you can get them from Toyota in this little pouch that I got in my CV boot hardware kit. You can see somewhere in there. Um, right there on the bottom of my finger. That is a new retainer clip for right there. Um, so if you do need another one, if your axles did not come with that clip, you can get them from Toyota. Uh, but all you're gonna do is that side that has a retain clip on, once that is installed, you're going to line your teeth up. Have your shaft here, as you can see, it's already resting on the clip. And then what you're gonna do, and now what makes it a little easier, is if you walk a flathead screwdriver around, pressing that retaining clip into the little groove it's in there and then tapping on the top end here do not hit the axle too hard you don't want to you know mess up any splines or anything like that um, but as soon as you get the that retaining clip actually into that groove on the axle itself it will slide in really easily so as you guys can see i tried to do it one hand with the camera but it was a little difficult um, i just literally walked around pressed it in as i walked around with one hand and now that uh, retaining ring is sat into the setting itself here so now what i'm going to do is actually just going to tap the whole entire axle in so we get all these splines here actually down into the CV itself. And there you go. Two good wax with a little uh, rubber mallet and that'll slide right in there nicely. As you guys can see, it is installed now. That clip is on the inside of that housing. You won't be able to see it, but now that is all one piece. So now what we're going to do next is we're going to take our outer CV boot. Um, if you have a long travel CV boot, that's perfect. If not, you're going to have to use your stock original CV boot uh, for the outer section. And you're just going to go ahead and slide that guy on there. Um, once that is sat, you're just going to have it resting down here. Um, we'll load up grease and everything after we get everything else finished. Lastly, we are going to go ahead and install the inner portion of the CV axle. Again, this is the section that is going to go into the inner portion of the CV axle that is connected to the differential itself. So what you're going to do first, I do have a brand new, as I said, um, inner CV boot. So we're going to go ahead and slide that CV boot on first. Just go ahead and get that out of the way. As I said, we're going to grease everything at the end. Now we're going to take that portion here with the three bearings on it. So we're going to take that guy and you will see there is a groove section inside there. That's what you're actually going to feed first. So we're going to feed that side in there. It's going to slide right onto your um, axle itself. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your flat retaining ring. You're just going to sit that on top there. And now what I found that makes it a little easier for the install is to press the back middle section of the ring 
and then go ahead and take a flathead screwdriver to press these two sides on. And that will actually snap into that channel you can see on the axle, and then you will be finished. And that's basically the install, guys. As I said, we still need to do our retaining rings on the boots themselves. We have to grease everything up. I need to get the new seals here for the hub. Uh, but that's everything. So basically, once this is all finished up with those things, this is going to be ready to put into the vehicle, and we'll have four-wheel drive again. So that's it, guys. If you have any questions, comment them below. Uh, stay tuned for more videos. As I said, we're going to make the FRS update video here very soon. I know a lot of people have been asking for that. I am kind of in the process of trying to sell it, so it's just been a little bit difficult to make that. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any more questions on the FJ, um, post them below. And thanks for watching. Bye, guys.